Hello everybody and welcome. Uh, today we're going to be uh, installing new fuel lines in this handheld um, Poulon, Poulon, however you pronounce it, uh, handheld leaf blower. Um, in previous video, in a previous video, I um, had this and I had an echo trimmer that was found in the garbage. And in that video, um, what I did was I wanted to make sure this ran. So what I did was I pulled this uh, air filter housing cover off here and I put a little uh, two-stroke gas in there and make sure it started and it starts. So if you ever find these in the garbage or whatever, a lot of these get thrown away, you know, because of the fuel lines. When the gas sits in there too long, it actually melts, rots, whatever you want to say. Uh, destroys the fuel lines so um, we're going to try to take this apart if it doesn't start raining if not if it starts raining uh, we'll have to continue it because i only have a, an outdoor uh, source to work here so let's get the camera over here and we'll begin by taking off the uh, air filter housing and we'll pop the carburetor off it I tried to set everything up um, tool-wise before I started making the video, so I have to search frantically for tools. In that previous video, I showed you how the uh, fuel lines were just broken right away from the uh, gas tank. On these models here, you have to split the case. Like Husqvarna, Echo, Steel, they have well, what I call an external uh, gas tank. This tank here is built right into the cover here, so you have to pop the cover off to pop the tank out. Which is a little bit of a pain. That's probably uh, one of the reasons why these get thrown away. If you're new at this, you want to keep the screws with, you know, like the covers and everything so you know where they go back on. See, this is already all taken apart here. That's why you should always drain the gas out or run the gas tank dry when you're not going to be using it for months. Another thing I just saw right now is we're going to have to change this uh, primer bulb. Usually when the fuel lines are bad and you think the primer bulb is good you should change it out anyway because it's not too far behind to break. Okay, now we're going to have to flip it off. Well, let's take this snorkel off here. You take the screw all the way out. The fastener. Let me make sure you can see this. Hardly. Just pop this thing all the way out. Like that. Take your snorkel off. Take this off to the side. Now you're going to flip your machine over because all the screws are in here. I 
pretty sure I have to take the muffler off to This drill broke on me. The end keeps popping off. I'm gonna have to go to Harbor Freight and buy another one. Yeah, muffler has to come off. I'm pretty sure of it. So, let's see what we need. See what we need to pop off this exhaust. That fits kind of loose in there. Let's see if we got one. Fits better. Or this one. Yeah, it fits better. Okay, it's coming off. Once you get them loose, then you go, go ahead and pull it off with your drill. I'm sorry about this drill, it's a pain. Then you can just start, start taking all these screws out. You can leave them in one pile, they're all the same. Okay, now we gotta go back to the. Exhaust gasket here. Can get that screw out. It's stuck. A lot of screws holding the cover, that's for sure. I always seem to miss one somewhere, so we're going to just double check and make sure I got them all. Okay, then you're going to want to open this up, but first, you want to flip it over the other way, because your gas tank is in here, this is part of the exhaust, yeah. See now. There's a bot this bottom flap here. This is for the uh, you could open this flap and you could use the bagger to suck the leaves into a bag, which 
they're never out in the garbage. They seem to always disappear anyway, so you really don't have to worry about this portion of it. And in here, you, you'll see like a clip in here. You just take a screwdriver, like so here. And then you just want to open the flap open here. I'm pretty sure, <clears throat> I'm, I know for sure, this is the intake manifold that has to come off too. So we're going to take that off. Sometimes these are really hard to get off because I think they use Loctite on the bolts here. Yeah. No, this one's not too bad. Some of them are really stuck and you can see that they use Loctite. So to pull on the Craftsman handheld this style and also the weed eater are like identical if not they are identical I know the craftsman and the weed eater are, are identical machines I did the weed eater was a knockoff of the uh, craftsman don't quote me on that though I'm just going by what everything looks like I think we should be able to split, split this case apart now, I think. I'm sure I, I missed a bolt somewhere, because I know I always do. Nope. I think we're alright. Flapper closed on me again. You'll have that happen to you too. Okay. Now remember, before you split the case apart, you want the gas tank to fill, point, pointing towards you. This way you don't have a... a This way it doesn't come apart on you. Always make sure on some of these they have this bar that comes up here and it's very important at the starter uh, rope that you put this back on on the right side whichever way you're taking it apart on the pen. Because if you, I've put them together where the rope was on the inner part of the pen or the outer part, I'm, I don't remember which. Got it all back together, couldn't pull start it. Okay, now we have our tank out. And what we have in here is all pieces of the uh, fuel line, the old fuel line. You wanna make sure you get that all out. Okay, on this one, it takes the, uh, it's a smaller line, fuel line. I have a whole bunch of these left over from uh, kits I bought from Home Depot. I don't seem to see these kits anymore, so you have to buy, I think, well, a line separately. I don't know what size they are or anything like that. But what I, ha what I do before I uh, send it through the gas tank is I take and I, I trim a piece off of the line here. So it's actually like a point and then you could start feeding it into the tank and by twisting it you're making the line like shrink a little bit to get it in through the hole 
And then as soon as you could get it to the point where you could grab it with a needle nose pliers, you could pull it out. And unfortunately, this is the side that goes into the carburetor, the main fuel line. And what I'm going to have to do now is I'm going to trim this back to normal. And then I have to put the uh, fuel filter back on it, which I'm using the original filter. I cleaned the filter out, all out. I blew through it, make sure there's no restric restrictions. And the problem I have a lot of times is trying to get that uh, fuel filter. I guess the original hose was bigger at the end where it goes on, fastens onto the uh, fuel filter. So what I normally do is I take my trusty Bic and I just heat up the line a little bit till uh, you know it gets to where it'll expand when you're uh, putting it putting the uh, f fuel filter back on. And I think I, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it right now on camera. See we can do it this way, so everybody can maybe see. So you can see how much bigger that the uh, you say it's like impossible to get back on. So if you heat this up with the lighter a little bit, don't go crazy because then you'll burn it. You just want to heat it up enough to where it'll you know you can work with it. It'll it'll expand. So, I'll be back in one second. First, what you could try to do is I have these, uh, I have a couple of golf tees. And what you want to do is you want to stick it into the line here. And it usually works pretty good, especially in the summer when it's warm out. And just keep on turning it before you uh, resort to uh, heating it up with the Bic lighter. Sometimes I get it to where it's big enough to where I can slip it on the uh, fuel filter. Let's see what happens. Okay, it opened up quite a bit with the golf tee. So once I started putting it on here, just very lightly with the lighter. You don't want to burn the, the hose. And it expanded enough to where I could get it on there where it's never going to come off. That won't come off in a million years. Then you want to... Um, on the other end of the uh, line here, you want to blow through and suck through and make sure that there's no restrictions. And then you could plop this filter back down in the tank here and just pull the excess out. Just make sure that the uh, filter is laying at the bottom of the tank here. And you do the same with the other side. Now I want to show you something on the carburetor. Okay, now that thinner line that has the uh, fuel filter connected to it in the gas tank, this is the main line here where it goes into the carburetor, okay? Now, this is the line that goes into the gas tank, which you stick it into the gas tank about a half inch. You don't submerge it into the gas or anything like that. You want like a half inch to three quarters of an inch I usually do to stick it to the gas tank. This way when you're priming this, it's putting pressure in the tank, uh, driving the fuel through the uh, fuel filter into the carburetor. And one way to f find out if you have a carburetor restriction is if you're priming it and you don't see any uh, fuel going into the bowl here, filling the bowl, then you know you have a restriction somewhere inside the carburetor here. But I'm not going to know anything about this carburetor until I change out the uh, primer bulb and put it back together. And then I'll know if the carburetor is okay or not. Um, we'll get into that later. Okay, this is the bigger line I told you. It only has to go in the uh, gas tank about a half inch to three quarters of an inch. So what I did was, you know, I cut the piece out so it was easier to get into the uh, 
gas tank here, but you don't have to worry that you snipped a little piece off. Just make sure you stick it in far enough to where it's good in there. No, nothing's going to happen. I've done it a million times. And this video has gone longer than I really wanted it to. So I want to thank everybody uh, for watching and stay tuned for part two. And we will be putting it back together and then we'll see if it'll fire up and make sure the carburetor is okay. I may, I may do a modification to the carburetor, so in case I have to adjust it, uh, we'll adjust the carburetor as well. Okay, everybody. See you next time. Or you'll see me next time.